Welcome back everyone. Time to get something productive done for once. Uh, as many of you who have followed the channel for a long time might remember, we used to have our angle fridge freezer underneath this dinette seat and I built a drawer slide mechanism that we could pull it out and keep the seat cushion in place. And uh, that drawer slide was, that whole mechanism was just too heavy and not rugged enough and so it kind of started falling apart. And for that reason, we moved it over here. So this is where most of you will know our fridge lives. And this is an angle chest fridge freezer. It can be a fridge or a freezer, but not both at the same time. And we always had intentions to buy two of them, having one mounted in the uh, kitchen counter here and the other under this dinette seat, either with a flip up cushion or a sliding mechanism of some kind to uh, pull out from the side of the seat here. Uh, unfortunately, due to cost constraints, we bought one at a time just to see how we'd like it. And unfortunately, since then, they've discontinued that model. I really like the chest style because, uh, as you know, when you open a fridge door, all the cold air will slide out the bottom. And I felt that this kept that cold air in, and so you could get whatever you want, and it, it would be more efficient that way. Anyway, we couldn't get that one anymore, and so we were making do with what we had. Uh, and for the most part, seven to 10 days, we could keep cold, fresh food in this size single fridge, freezer, fridge, it's only a fridge in our case. But for shopping trips that needed to last longer than that, longer than seven days or so when we were in Mexico, we were finding vegetables, even like bell peppers, which we wouldn't necessarily refrigerate, were starting to go bad quicker because of the heat. And so we needed more refrigeration space and we didn't have it. So then we went to Overland Expo 2019 and Isotherm had their uh, demo van there with all many of the uh, fridges they offer, fridge freezer combinations and so on. And so Caesar there gave us a tour of all the features of each of the models and uh, they had a 20% discount at the show. So we picked up an Isotherm 85 drawer, which we'll be installing today. And here it is. Uh, we had it shipped to Colorado 4x4 van. He received it for us and I've just got it plugged in here on the countertop just to confirm everything's working. And it is. So as you can see, there's a top drawer, which is the freezer, a cheese rack, and then the main drawer area here. And it's got really slick, I maybe didn't even show it, but the, uh, the soft close mechanism really pulls it closed once it decides to click. So it's all working. Uh, I do need to make a few little adjustments before we install it. I need this fan not blowing inward, but blowing outward so that it exhausts air out of that cabinet. Uh, if it hasn't been made painfully obvious yet, it is going underneath this dinette seat. So when that's installed, I need the air blowing outward. And then there is a piece of trim that uh, fits along the bottom here that wasn't installed for shipping safety, but it needs to get put on too. Okay, so it's going right here under this dinette and uh, all of our interior cabinetry has all been constructed with one inch square aluminum tubing and to that i have drilled and tapped machine screws into the tubing to hold all these panels on and i did that because i can remove any panel and take it right down to a skeleton for jobs just like this or if we damage something or configuration changes for whatever reason it's uh, all bolted together so let's take it apart <laughs> So that one didn't necessarily need to come off, but just for visual clarity and uh, ease of access, I pulled it off because it's quick and easy. Okay, and when I built this, I thought we might need extra stuff materials. So in many places where there was a void, I just stuffed some extra material for problems just like this. Now, if we move inside here, I'll show you my strategy from where we're putting this fridge. Okay, so inside this compartment now, this surface here uh, is our wheel well, driver's side wheel well, and a majority of the fridge will be just sitting on here, but it does drop down here uh, in front of that. So I need to transcribe this height of the wheel well onto the, the, the back of that panel. So I'm just using a board and a pencil. Oops. 
and now I mostly have a line. Okay, so I've got the inside marked. Now let's just pull this off. Okay, so moving now to the installation and usage instruction manual included with the, the uh, fridge. We can see our drawer 85 model has a cutout dimensions of 500 millimeters by 630. Convert 630 millimeters to inches. 630 millimeters is equal to 24.803 inches. So, doing some quick Google math, I can now use my American non-metric measure tape and mark out the rest of this hole. Okay, so we're actually here at Colorado 4x4 van headquarters, and he's graciously given us access to his shop and tools. I've pulled the riving knife off because we're going to need to plunge cut this panel. Okay, so I stopped short of the corners here by just a little bit, just so I didn't have uh, too much to cover up. And I'm just gonna finish this off with every Overlander's secret weapon, the Leatherman. Okay, and so I'm just going to screw this back in for a quick test fit. All right, let's see if she fits. Okay. Not too big. All right, so the, the recommended hole size is actually quite sloppy and the mounting holes here are right on the edge of the cut. So I've raided Bill's garage, found some scrap strips of plywood. I'm going to cut to fit inside there, glue them on so that the screws have something more substantial to bite onto. All right, so I've got some backer boards cut to size here and some construction adhesive. Thanks, Bill. And thankfully, Bill has a plethora of these quick grip style clamps. You'll see why in just a moment. And now just put a little hole in here. Once again, for the second time. Hopefully I don't glue this to the aluminum frame. Or smear it all over my seat cushion. in there nice and snug but I'll clamp it anyway
So this is a pretty big drill, but I intend to put uh, machine screws through here with washers and lock nuts on the back. And those furring strips, I'm calling them furring strips, uh, run right to the bottom so they can support some of the load there as well, because this is a pretty thin, lightweight panel. Okay, so next of course is electrical. Now this unit, to my surprise, came with a 110 adapter. I have no use for that, um, but I might in the future, so I'm just gonna leave it back there. We do have a ton of space back here, as you've probably gleaned by now, and I'm going to utilize that, it won't go to waste. I'm going to be relocating our inverter and some other equipment that's never used back there. But the uh, priority right now is the 12 volt power cord. And they have this great yellow placard in four languages to remind you that negative is black, red is positive. And you should keep these wires as short as possible and if you need to be longer, uh, follow the instructions in the manual for wire gauge. Uh, in my case, I've got a grounded aluminum chassis right here. So I'm going to put this eyelet on here and just ground it right on that bolt. And then this wire just runs up to our fuse block, which is just behind this dinette seat here. So I'll do that now. Okay, and now for the positive, I need to run it from here all the way to underneath here, past the batteries and up to the fuses. And if you know me by now, you know I'm a huge fan of soldering connections and not butt connectors. So here you go. Shrink tube. Uh, strip way more wire than you think you need. Twisting them in a twisty configuration thusly. And that in itself could do in a pinch. If you black taped that, it would probably be fine. But I'm going to solder it. So here I'm trying to heat the wire, not the solder. Uh, the little bit of an exception is that you put on some solder. Okay, so once you've got your uh, soldered joint there, put a piece of high quality double wall shrink tube on there. Nicey nice. Okay, inside the utility room, uh, we've got the other end of that spool of wire. And uh, just kind of give you guys a tour of the, the uh, wire track here. Gonna feed it behind this nonsense. And so this wire is just gonna run up here and I can cut it here, thusly. Strip it, thusly. And then spade terminal, thusly. That's what that looks like. And then I don't, honestly, I don't know how you're supposed to crimp these with a conventional tool. Probably need the special tool. I would far sooner that that was soldered somehow, but it's not. Okay, so the wire comes from the front here I'm going to run it inside this wire track. It does a little bit of a U-turn here, so I've got a little bit of extra length. Terminated with a spade connector. Onto this fuse block, and as you can see, it's complaining that uh, the fuse has blown because the fuse does not yet exist. All right, so I'm gonna guess a 10 amp fuse. I'll go read the manual later. Seems to work. And then you just cover all the wires back up. Nicey nice. Let's go see if it's working. Okay, now checking the user's manual. Uh, the drawer 85, it says, should be pulling six amps. So let's check that out. We've got our fluke current clamp. And if we clamp it on the positive power here, it's pulling 4.5 amps. And we've just turned it on, so that should be approximately the highest current it should pull. 
Uh, the manual does say to put a 15 amp fuse in, so I'm going to run out and change that to a 15 amp. And then clean up this disaster zone. And then we'll uh, get Kara to give you a final review. All right, so as you can see, it's quite the upgrade going from the 40 liters that we had here to the 85 liters that we now have. And I moved over most of our fridge contents and you can see how much space we still have. It's really nice to have this extra rack under here. And the other thing I think we're really go going to enjoy is having enough room to put in our water bottles so we can have cold water. There's a really nice space up here for cans. And of course, the little freezer on top. And yeah, really looking forward to it. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I'm very impressed. All the uh, folds are super sharp and uh, crisp. The stainless steel looks like it was all laser cut. It's, it's an excellent looking unit. Uh, drawer slides are very smooth. My one little gripe, I guess, is that the latch that holds this in, not so much the latch, but the retainer is a little bit stiff. That might work in in time, but uh, it's a little stiff to get out. But I'd rather have it stay in than falling out, I guess. And uh, it's nice, as you close it, it gets to a certain point and then it sucks itself shut. So, super happy with that. I'd like to thank Indel Wabasto for setting us up with this isotherm 85 liter drawer. So if you're interested in picking up one of these or any of the other isotherm fridges, uh, check out the link in the description and head over to their website. That's gonna be it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.